the sub $150 price range of graphics cards is near and dear to many gamers' hearts. It used to be the point where you could pick up some genuine value for money, but the new market is currently a wasteland. The used market, however, has some spicy options, and I'm going to compare two of the best. The RTX 2060 from Nvidia and RX 5600 XT from AMD might at first look less than exciting, especially given the current trend towards larger amounts of VRAM, but at this price point most of the 8GB options are seriously lacking in performance. The two 6GB cards compared here are both capable of playing the latest games at 1080p in mostly high settings, or medium at worst. The Nvidia card is a Gigabyte OC model that I purchased from eBay for £125, and the AMD is a rare triple fan Sapphire Pulse that I bought from AliExpress for £125 after tax. Both cards have their own respective review videos linked below or at the end of the video if you want more detail. It should be pointed out that there's about a 6 month time difference between the reviews, hence why there are some titles in the 2060 video that aren't in the 5600 XTs, and vice versa. I'm always a little surprised when GeForce cards beat the equivalent Radeons in console ports, however it's actually only true of Spider-Man Remastered at 1080p. The 2060 is about 10% faster than the 5600 XT at very high settings, while at 1440p very high, both cards have a single frame difference in averages, but the Radeon seems to provide better 1% lows. My 1440 results for God of War were recorded at mismatched settings, but at 1080p I tested both cards at high and saw a clear 10% advantage to the Radeon. Both cards are clear of the 60fps mark, though the Radeon has the headroom that you don't need to worry about stuttering in busier encounters or cutscenes. The 5600 XT's win is slimmer in Uncharted 4, at least at 1080 Ultra. Both cards come in either side of the 80 FPS mark on average, again with the Radeon providing much smoother frame times. At 1440 high, it's like someone cut the 2060's strings as it drops to almost half the performance of the 5600 XT. And bear in mind, both cards have 6 gigs of RAM. That does, however, mark the end of the clear wins for the Radeon. The 2060 beats the 5600 XT by 5 FPS in Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p Ultra, and at 1440p high it's pretty much a tie, though the AMD card does score a small win in 1% lows. Halo Infinite is a picky bugger when it comes to GPU architectures, but both Turing and RDNA 1 are on the Christmas card list and perform quite nicely. The GeForce wins by less than 5 frames at 1080p high. The Cyberpunk difference is much more pronounced. At 1080p high, the 2060 almost reaches a 60fps average, while the 5600 XT barely breaks over 50fps at the same settings. Same studio, wildly different results. The Witcher 3's remastered update is virtually identical between cards, with the Radeon once more taking a slight edge in percentile lows. My testing methodology is slightly different between the two cards in A Plague Tale Requiem, but I think the result is a fair one. Both test runs were done at 1080p high, with quality upscaling, however the Radeon was tested with the game's integrated upscaler, while the GeForce used DLSS. Aside from a small quality difference, I wouldn't expect a major performance impact, and the GeForce only wins by 4 FPS. Finally, as I said at the beginning, live service games aren't the easiest to compare across time, but Warzone scores virtually identical averages on both GPUs at 1080p Ultra, with the GeForce this time earning a small advantage in 1% lows. The average of averages gives the win to the RTX 2060 6GB by one single frame with 75.3 FPS compared to 74.2 for the RX 5600 XT. Any purchase decision between these two then can only really be made based on other factors like price, brand preference and, of course, how much you value the GeForce's special RTX features like ray tracing and DLSS. Check out the 2060's dedicated review on screen. Uh, that's, that's not the 2060 video. 
psych. Nope, we're not done yet. You see, while the 5600 XT is the closest match I've found locally, in some markets the 2060 actually costs a lot more. And that brings it in line with the next card up in the RDNA 1 series. At 1080p, the 5700 XT dominates the 2060 in Spider-Man Remastered. It's about 15% faster in both averages and lows, and that lead stretches to 30% of 1440p. The 2060 can't even catch up with DLSS Q turned on. It's still short by 5 FPS on average and a massive 20 FPS 1% lows, thanks no doubt to Big Navi's 2GB VRAM advantage. The 5700 XT curb stomps the 2060 in God of War, leading by more than 30% at 1080p and able to main 60 FPS plus even up to 1440p. The demolition continues in Uncharted 4, 30% higher averages and 50% higher minimums at 1080 Ultra, more than double the average at 1440p and a settings bump to boot. At this point, the Radeon's just showboating. Forza Horizon 5, another 30% margin win for the RX 5700 XT at 1080p, but it actually loses at 1440p. Oh, no, wait, my bad. The 2060's at 1440p, the 5700 XT's at 4K. Things calm down a little in Halo Infinite, the 2060 loses by just 15% at 1080 and a little under 20% at 1440. Cyberpunk is also less of a drubbing. There's still a clear disadvantage to AMD architectures, so the 5700 XT only wins by 7 FPS. The Witcher 3 sees a near 10% advantage to the Radeon at 1080p. I skipped 1440p when comparing the 2060 and 5600 XT because neither card managed 60 FPS on average, but the 5700 XT can manage to run the higher resolution with a 60 FPS minimum. I didn't test the 5700 XT at 1080p with quality upscaling in a playtale, but without upscaling it's just two frames below the 2060 with DLSS on, and with DLSS off, the 2060 drops all the way to 52 FPS, meaning once more, the 5700 XT wins by about 30%. Finally, in Warzone, the AMD card wins by about 35% at 1080p Ultra and 30% at 1440p Ultra. It also wins in Resident Evil 4 by a whopping 30 FPS at 1440p. In The Last of Us, it can score 11 FPS higher at 1080 high, while the 2060 is stuck on medium. And when I tested those titles with the 5700 XT, it was using earlier patch versions. So it may do even better now. With the RX 5700 XT easily available at around $150 in many markets, it's a dominant presence. In reality, it's fairer to compare it to the RTX 2070 Super or 2080, and in that context, the lack of DLSS and RT do work against it. But both of those G-forces still cost radically more than the Radeon. Although I've yet to test the RX 6600 personally, from what I've seen on other channels it still seems to fall a little behind the older card, and in the UK at least, the 6600 still costs slightly more. Comparing the 5700 XT to anything else remotely close in price is kinda like a 30 year old English professor competing in a junior spelling bee, or a pub arm wrestling competition being gatecrashed by 1980s era Mike Tyson. There are only maybe two reasons why you wouldn't pay the small premium to get the 5700 XT over the 2060. Three, if you count blind brand loyalty. First, if you need CUDA acceleration for a specific task like Blender. AMD's CUDA equivalent, Rockham, isn't available on this GPU generation and isn't as widely supported by software either. The other consideration is power and running costs. The 5700 XT needs two PCIe connectors and consumes about 70 watts more power without undervolting. If you have to factor in a PSU upgrade, or if electricity is expensive where you live, then maybe the 5700 XT isn't for you. For everyone else, buy the 5700 XT, you cowards! Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.